Welcome, I'm Amy and I'll be talking you through this portion of this tutorial. We're here today to learn about wireless networks. We're going to look at their components as well as how they function. Before we get started, let's take a look at one of the International Society for Technology and Education standards that will be met by this lesson. Standard 3 encourages teachers to model digital age work and learning. Learning about wireless networks does this and shifts fluency in technology systems that can then be transferred to new technologies. Here's the screenshot of the standard taken from the ISTE website. Now since bring your own device days often lead to network questions, you'll be able to turn these questions into valuable teachable moments. Okay, let's get started with the basic definition of a network. A network's just to connect a group of people or things that share information with each other. A good example of this is your network of Facebook friends. Here on the right you can see your friend network. You're in the middle and your friends are connected to you. So what's a wireless computer network? It connects computers and your digital devices through the air using radio waves. Wireless networks are commonly referred to as wire wireless local area networks or just Wi-Fi. While wireless networks can be set up many different ways, the basic components remain the same. The heart of the network is the access point and the links connect it to the nodes. The graphic here illustrates this and starts building definitions for these terms. You can see that nodes are your devices, links are some kind of connector, and the access point like yourself in your friend network is the hub directing the activities. Now let's build on these definitions by looking into how we connect in the air. Your access point is a wireless router. It provides access to the internet and other computers on the network. The router is actually wired to a modem that provides internet access, typically through ethernet wires. From this point on, the network becomes wireless. The links are radio waves instead of wires. They use one or two bands of spectrum, 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz. The 2.4 GHz spectrum is shared with microwaves, baby monitors, garage door openers, and many other non-Wi-Fi devices. All of these devices can cause interference to the network, but 2.4 GHz has a long range compared to the 5 GHz spectrum. The 5 GHz spectrum is extremely less crowded, but it has a shorter range requiring multiple access points. As for nodes, they're the computers and digital devices you're using. Laptops and desktops have wireless network information cards that receive and send data through radio waves, and your mobile devices are like two-way radios, and they receive and transmit radio waves to link to the access point. Since we know the roles of the individual components, it's simple to put them together to understand how a wireless network functions. The access point or router sends information to and from the nodes or devices connected to the network using radio waves or links. One more question you might be asking is how does the router know which node is which? Your computers use something called Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol for this. TCP follows rules to create and assemble packets of information, and IP sends and receives them. An IP address is assigned to your computer while it's in a network. It's like your computer's very own phone number. So that sums up the basics of wireless networks. Who knew it's as easy as an access point linking nodes? 
You can explore networks further by asking your school tech to show you the specifics of your wireless network and learn about the benefits of wireless networks in schools by continuing to step three of this tutorial. Thank you and happy learning.